Raise your hand if you've ever been told butter will kill you. Raise your other hand if you secretly ate it anyway. Congratulations, you're probably healthier than you think. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional information online. In this video, we're going to hear from a doctor who has reviewed papers and is going to talk about how saturated fats are not bad for you. There was actually a buried study that we're going to learn about here. That was something even I didn't know about 25 years ago when I learned that saturated fat was probably okay to eat in our clinical trials. So let's hear what Dr. Hampton has to say and be sure to wait till the end where I give my final thoughts. Before we dive into today's video, I want to personally invite you to join my free diabetes lab workshop. In this essential workshop, I'll walk you through how to understand your lab results so you can take control of your health and reverse type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes for good. See the link in the description to sign up. Today we're diving into a study that could save your relationship with butter and bacon. Yes, we're putting Ansel Key's heart hypothesis head to head with the little known Minnesota coronary experiment. By the end of this video, you'll not only feel good about steak and eggs, but understand why sugar, not saturated fat, deserves the blame. Hit that like button, subscribe, and tell me which foods that are high in saturated fat that you would miss if you couldn't enjoy them. So always consider the source. This is a trusted source, a physician who has reviewed clinical evidence and will just present the side-by-side -side nutritional epidemiology hypothesis that Ansel Keys came up with, with a clinical trial that actually put it to the test. And what is kind of shocking is that because the results didn't come out the way they wanted them, they didn't publish the paper. That's called file drawer bias, where someone does a study, but they keep it in the file drawer. They don't publish it for various reasons. Now, Dr. Hampton is a practicing physician, so I would trust his clinical judgment about using low-carb keto diets as well. So let's go back to the 1950s. That's when Ansel Keys told the world that saturated fat and cholesterol clogged arteries like grease in a drain pipe. He launched the seven country study to prove his hypothesis linking fat to heart disease. And the world, well, we fell for it. The problem, Keyes cherry-picked data from only seven countries, ignoring others that didn't fit his theory. It was a classic case of confirmation bias. Imagine blaming your car's engine trouble on bacon grease because your family likes eating bacon when you take family trips. And as ridiculous as that sounds, that's basically what Keyes did. And as you've learned from my channel, association does not equal causation. Now let's talk about the Minnesota coronary experiment. So before we get to the experimental test of saturated fat, whether someone eats it or, or not, it's important, I think, to just pause on where the low-fat diet came from. And I was trained in the 1980s, 1990s in the US, and it was pretty much dogma that low-fat diets fixed everything. The fear of cholesterol in the food, fat in the food as well, the fear of cholesterol in the blood was getting entrenched. The food pyramid was getting promoted as the best way of eating, and it's mostly carbohydrate. There was no evidence for the food pyramid actually before it was rolled out, it didn't have to have any evidence. It was a government program. And it was the duty of researchers afterward to kind of study the low fat pyramid. And it turned out not to really have any evidence behind it. If you want deep dives into that history of where the low fat diet came from and how it was never really proven to be helpful for you know a wide variety of issues and for, for most people, you should take a look at Gary Taubes's book, T-A-U-B-E-S, Good Calories, Bad Calories. That's Gary Taubes's book. And then also Nina Teichel's book, The Big Fat Surprise. These books really are sort of companion pieces in that Gary starts it out 
Nina picks up the story and carries it forward. And I learned some greater detail in Nina's book that Gary didn't have time to put in his book. So if you're still hung up on this, you want, if you're really into the research, you want to, or you're new, you're new to this and you still believe saturated fats are unhealthy, it's important to know where that came from. So nutritional epidemiology is where Ansel Keys started to do this research. There's still a lot of nutritional epidemiology done today. I agree with Dr. Hampton that association does not mean causation. So you have to take a pause on where, consider the source, where the information comes from. If it is from nutritional epidemiology, you want to call that hypothesis generating research where if there's an association, you would then follow that up with an experimental trial. And it's not until the experimental trial is done that you will actually know that it's causative. Now, if there's a huge association, meaning like the association of smoking and COPD, emphysema, or lung cancer, there was never a randomized trial of cigarette smoking. And most experts agree that even though there's no randomized trial, that huge association in the nutritional, excuse me, epidemiology studies, not nutritional epidemiology, were enough to implicate it. But when we're looking at the diet and associations, we're not looking at nearly the same magnitude of association as for smoking. So if Ansel Keys had this idea, he went out to prove it, well, Actually, you're supposed to disprove your hypothesis. Scientists actually create a hypothesis and then they reject the null hypothesis and, and you really can never prove something. That's just a basic experimental and scientific principle. You're always trying to disprove the other and, and truth is really never truly known. This was a randomized controlled trial which shows cause and effect and is scientifically more robust than Key's observational study, which only shows possible correlation and possible association. Conducted between 1968 and 1973, it tested what happens when you replace saturated fats with vegetable oils. The results? Participants who ate more vegetable oils actually had lower cholesterol. But here's the kicker. They actually had a higher mortality rate. Yep, you heard that right. Lower cholesterol didn't save lives, it seemed to cost them. So, so let's get this straight. They told us to trade butter for margarine and we were rewarded with a higher mortality rate. Now that's a swap I don't think any of us are interested in making. You've heard the commercial, I can't believe it's not butter. Me, I can't believe people are still saying I can't believe it's not butter. Especially after the Minnesota study showed margarine consumption will actually shorten our lives, not lengthen it. While Key's study painted a simplistic picture, fat equals bad, the Minnesota study looked deeper. It measured actual outcomes. Who lived, who died, and why. And here's where it gets a little spicy. The data from the Minnesota study was buried for decades. Yes, you heard me. This study, which could have rewritten dietary guidelines, was put on the shelf because its findings didn't support the anti-fat narrative, hidden from you and hidden from me. Meanwhile, sugar's role in heart disease stayed in the shadows. So if saturated fat isn't the bad guy, who is? Yeah, so the Minnesota <laughs> the study that it was literally found in the basement of, of the investigator. And when the investigator was asked about it, they basically said that, well, the results didn't come out the way we wanted them. And if you looked at the date, it wasn't until 2016 that the publication about the Minnesota Heart Study came out. So there were decades of, of time when an experimental study of reducing saturated fat and adding vegetable oil, so swapping the margarine instead of butter actually showed the worse outcomes and how many people, you know, gosh, a generation of folks have been eating margarine and not to improve the health, I'm afraid. If this is new to you, I understand. It was new to me 25 years ago and I've been living in a low carb, high fat diet world for a long time. We now know that the more carbs you eat, 
the less fat you burn and the slogs around in the bloodstream. So actually your blood fat goes down when you eat more fat in the diet because you're burning the fat. This is just one of those metabolic changes that happen when you follow a keto or very low carb diet, you become a fat burner. So you don't worry about the saturated fat in the food because you're going to be burning it in your body. Enter sugar. The Minnesota study and others like it revealed that sugar, not fat, drives inflammation, insulin resistance, and heart disease. The real enemy isn't butter. It's not the fat on the ground beef. It's not coconut oil. It's that sneaky little teaspoon of sugar you put in your coffee or tea. Turns out the sugar industry was like a bad magician, distracting you with fat while quietly sipping sugar into everything. Here's the takeaway. The Minnesota coronary experiment exposed the flaws in Key's hypothesis and cleared saturated fat's name. The real culprit, sugar. It's time we start fearing butter and start questioning the sugar in our diets. Not just for you and me, but for our friends and family as well. So if this video gave you food for thought, share it with someone who still thinks I can't believe it's not butter or any other margarine products will extend their life. And if you want to keep busting nutrition myths with me, hit subscribe and join the fight for metabolic truth. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for lunch and I got a date with some delicious lamb cooked in bacon grease. <laughs> well, I, I like Dr. Hampton. I like his videos that can drill in onto one element of a bigger picture that yeah, it's okay not to eat carbs and regular food that comes with saturated fat, real food is just fine. So I really like Dr. Hampton and his message, his review of a basic principle that, that saturated fat is bad, what they, we were all taught is really not substantiated by the, the clinical science and even basic science. There was a paper some years ago where the experts on nutrition got together and published several papers. One of them had it explicitly in the title that saturated fat is not a culprit for heart disease. Now, of course, the basic science and clinical science researchers are sort of at this level to get that information percolated out through the clinical world, but for doctors, for other organizations, sometimes it'll never get through organizations that have been founded on the idea that you need to limit fat. They'll never really address this or, or acknowledge that it might be true. So you have to look to organizations that are not on a particular agenda other than your health getting better. For example, the organization might be funded by pharmaceutical companies or have a, a different agenda that is not one that will always follow the science. So I was reassured that the studies that said low fat diets were bad really weren't great scientific studies. And those are the books by Gary Taubes and Nina Teicholz. And also reassured when the scientific researchers who do human studies on saturated fat came together to write a paper saying saturated fat is not a culprit for heart disease, but it takes years for that information to percolate through to the organizations. But that makes me relax and, and comfortable using a low carb, high fat diet or a keto diet and to teaching this to my patients as I've done for the last 15 years now. I hope that's helpful. If you like, please like, please subscribe and ring the notification bell and look for new content twice a week now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.